the Next In Line podcast, where we are helping to prepare you for whatever is next in line. As always, I'm your host, Chance Pitts, and I would like to thank you for tuning in to this episode. Guys and gals, first and foremost, if you receive value from this episode or any other episode that we've put out on the podcast, please make sure you are sharing the show with like-minded individuals who might receive the same kind of value. Uh, That's going to be the number one way for us to grow and reach more people and be able to extend that helping hand out to them as well. Additionally, you can help us out by subscribing on whatever platform you're listening on and also leaving us a rating or review if possible. Uh, Interacting with the show like that helps us become more visible on the charts whenever people look for self-help or personal development or professional development shows like what we have going on here. Guys, as we get ready to dive into this show today, I want to talk to you all about something that I think is very important. I know we cover a lot of podcasts and a lot of topics that are very important to me, but this is one that I think tops many others in a lot of ways, and you'll see why as we get into it. So today, what I want to talk to you all about is life's biggest yin and yang type relationship. And what I mean by that is that Today we'll be discussing two very different things that combine together to form a perfectly harmonical relationship. And this perfect relationship typically leads to a perfect outcome as well. And the perfect outcome is typically what we see as success or achievement of our goals or the ability to just overcome the obstacles and the hard things that life throws our way. But to find this perfect relationship... To find the perfect yin and yang, you've got to dive into those two major factors and what it takes to be successful in the yin and yang when you're trying to do extremely hard things within your own life. And there's a ton of different relationships that fit that same yin and yang model or the yin and yang reference, whatever you want to call it. But today we're going to focus on very specific ones. And I want to start with the yang. So... Our internal yang is what I like to try to picture as physical strength. And guys, as we know, physical strength is a measure of exertion of force on a physical object. So for instance, picture a fireman running into a burning building. Think about all the excess weight that he's carrying with all the gear that he has. Think about the heavy coat. Think about those heavy boots, that oxygen tank, and so on and etc. All those things that he has to carry gear-wise into that burning house. So whenever he gets inside there, he runs upstairs. And he's moving himself and all of that heavy gear up the stairs by exerting force on the stairs downward to propel himself upward. He's heading in to rescue somebody that is in need. And as he reaches the second story, he rounds a corner and he finds a room that has a little old lady trapped inside. And guys, that door is locked. He was told on the outside that there was someone trapped behind a locked door inside. So he decides to kick that door down. And when he gets inside, he finds that the old lady is trapped under some kind of debris. And when he looks a little bit closer, he sees that she is trapped under a large wooden beam. So he goes ahead and he grabs the end of that large wooden beam and he lifts it off of her. And then once she's free from the beam, he picks her up and he bravely makes his way back outside of the house, guys. And as he's headed outside of the house, he's carrying all of that gear and this little old lady. And it's very hot, guys. It's hard to breathe. This flame-ridden house is just going up in smoke all around him. But he makes his way outside anyway, and he goes to the ambulance that's waiting. And then from there, the paramedics take over, and he's able to get this old lady some much-needed oxygen and various other treatments to help with this tough situation that she's found herself in. And the old lady ends up being okay. And that's because of this big, strong fireman who is a hero. Everyone always talks about the physical strength of what he's able to do and how he's able to get through the situation. He was able to strap on all that heavy gear. He was able to run up those steps carrying all of that heavy gear. Whenever he came upon the locked door, he was able to kick that door in. Whenever he found himself in the room with her with that heavy beam, he was able to lift the heavy beam off of her. And then he was able to carry this little injured old lady all the way down the stairs and outside the house safely. 
and the heat didn't even really impact him because he trained hard and he's gotten himself used to working in tough conditions. His physical strength made all of these situations possible, made him able to complete every single task on that list of things he had to do in order to save this woman's life. And guys, it's true. When we think about the traditional or the stereotypic fire firefighters out there, we see a muscle bound kind of guy that's in really good shape and someone who's capable of running into a burning building in order to save someone's life. And guys, that physical strength is definitely an aspect that's needed in this line of work. I mean, you can't even be a firefighter unless you pass a physical test consisting of a bunch of different things. Guys, this is like a hose drag. This is climbing stairs with an additional 25 pounds worth of weight on your shoulders. This is an equipment carry, rescue mission, missions, searching missions, ladder raising and extension missions, forcible entry, and even ceiling pulling and breaching. This is a very strenuous type of physical standards test just to be able to be a firefighter. And you also got to keep in mind that the gear they're wearing while they're doing these exercises is anywhere from 45 pounds to 100 pounds, guys. You start looking at those big oxygen tanks, you look at those heavy coats that they've got, all the gear that they keep on them as well. And, you know, there's absolutely no denying that physical strength was extremely important to this. The yang was a huge factor in him being able to save this old lady's life. But guys, what about the yin in this situation? Where does the yin fit into this story? Our internal yin is what I like to refer to as our mental fortitude. And that mental fortitude is the mental and emotional strength in facing difficulty, adversity, danger, or temptation. So guys, remember, we had said that physical strength is the measure of a human's exertion of force on an object. So naturally, I think a good alternative definition to mental fortitude would be the contrast of that. The measure of mental or emotional force the human mind can withstand to have exerted on it. And with these two definitions in mind, guys, the one that we kind of did as an adverse and the original definition, how does the yin tie into this situation? How did mental fortitude play a role in the firefighter saving the old woman well let's start with at the station when the alarm goes off and everything just goes crazy and all that excitement starts to happen it'd be very easy to lose your head and forget something forget a step in the process of getting ready or to forget physically a piece of equipment that he needed to bring on the mission with him but no, that fireman was mentally fortified enough to ensure that he had all of his required gear and was ready to do his job when he arrived on that scene at that burning house. And then, guys, when he found himself at the house fire, I think it's very easy to imagine that most people would probably shy away from running into a burning building, but not the firefighter. He stepped up to the plate and he runs through the front door. He runs into the flames and the smoke and all of that uncertainty surrounding that situation then we know that when he gets inside it would have been very easy for him to see all the flames and the smoke and that completely different and chaotic atmosphere and just go into a state of panic and if he would have panicked he would have likely forgotten which direction he was supposed to go to try to find this old lady once he got inside and that probably would not have ended well for anyone they probably both would have lost their lives but instead, he's able to keep his wits about him, and he finds the room. And when he finds the room, the door is locked, so he busts right through it to find that old lady. And then whenever he sees her stuck, he could have decided that the situation wasn't worth his time. It wasn't worth the risk to himself or the investment it was going to take to save this old woman. And, you know, in this scenario, he was also alone. He didn't have backup. I know that's not typically how it works in the real world, guys, but... He was alone. Whenever he saw her stuck, he could have decided that it wasn't worth him trying to risk his life to save her. And no one would have known what happened if he would have abandoned her. But he didn't. He committed to saving the old woman's life. And that took a lot of discipline of the mind to not think of the alternative ways he could have took himself out of the situation without risk. 
And guys, there's a million stressful things going on around him in this situation. Think of the fire. Think of the collapsing building. Think of all the sirens, the loud noises, the smoke. It's hard to breathe. It's hot. He's got all that gear on. He is struggling. So there's a lot of mental stress going on in this situation, guys. But instead of focusing on all those different stressors going on around him, he focuses on getting the old lady out of the house. And when he gets outside, instead of throwing off all that hot gear, instead of getting to oxygen, instead of taking care of himself, he makes sure that the old lady is taken care of first. So with that in mind, you could probably argue, guys, that his mental fortitude in all of these different ways in these different situations saved not only the old woman, but himself as well. So which one was more important? Well, it's not just one, right, guys? It's the yin and the yang. It's the coming together of that perfect relationship that helped him execute his mission. It's the mental fortitude and the physical strength that helped him save the life of that old lady and they worked together the whole time and guys that's important to think about think about that he is mentally fortified because he has confidence in his physical abilities and he's also physically strong because he's mentally tough enough to not give up when the things get hard and the going gets tough and now, guys, I know this is an extreme version of the yin and the yang, and not all of us are running in and out of burning buildings and trying to save people's lives, but you've got to realize that our daily life works the same exact way. What are some of the hard things that you find yourself facing in life, guys? Is it that you're struggling with your weight or your physical health? Is it a drinking problem you're trying to overcome? Is it a lack of financial discipline that's holding you back? Is it a struggle within your career or entrepreneurship? Are you thinking about trying to find a new job or trying to advance within the one that you have in front of you right now? No matter the situation, guys, you've got to break this scenario down and understand it at the most basic level. Where does your yin come in? What aspects of this situation could be resolved with mental fortitude? And once you've got those things figured out, guys, you've got to figure out the yang of the situation. What are the physical and tangible aspects of it? How can I utilize my physical strengths in the environment around me in order to come out ahead? So guys, let's break these few examples down. Like we talked about first off, struggling with weight or physical health. The yin of this situation could be trying to create the habits in your brain in order to change the way that you think about your health. Start approaching these different situations with a new mindset of would a healthy person do this? So ask yourself, actually, would a healthy person put that in their grocery basket? Would a healthy person get up and go to the gym today? Would a healthy person eat that donut in the break room at work that your coworker brought? And then, guys, hold yourself accountable. Do it on the physical front. Whenever you start to think about the yang and the physical side of things, utilize physical training that fits your situation for the yang. This could be walking. This could be running. This could be lifting weights. But, guys, you've also got to talk about physically removing the junk food from the environment around you or even physically putting less food on your plate and not physically getting up for seconds whenever you finish that off your plate. What about the drinking problem we discussed? The yin in this situation could be finding a big enough reason to saying no to drinking. Maybe it's your family that this is having a negative impact on. Maybe it's putting yourself in dangerous situations that you don't need to be a part of. Maybe it's preventing you from advancing in your career or even just ha causing you to have some different social situations that don't go your way. Guys, it could be just changing your mental state around what drinking is. Whatever it is, you've got to find your why to walk away from that. Then the yang, the physical side of things, would be removing yourself from situations with alcohol. Not purchasing alcohol when you go to the store. Avoiding that section of HEB or Walmart or wherever you shop. But maybe it's also physically going to an AA meeting or rehabilitation then maybe it's doing a physical activity that occupies that space in your mind whenever you find yourself wanting a drink. See, we kind of went full circle back to physical activity there. But guys, what about the lack of financial discipline in your life? 
Maybe the yin is training your mind to become more financially literate, to understand how money works and how you can utilize a budget to help you reach your goals and get out of debt. Maybe the yang is physically sitting down and writing out said budget, then physically moving money into a savings account or into an investment account and trying to physically adhere to your plans. Guys, lastly, we talked about struggling within your career. The yin of this situation could be honestly just seeing the positive in your situation. Maybe you're just caught in a rut. Maybe you're going through some burnout and your job is something that is actually a great place to be. But guys, maybe maybe the yin is actually getting yourself mentally capable of looking for something that's a better fit for you and then having the courage to leave that comfortable place because even though it's not ideal, it could still be very comfortable for you and try to go find a place that can actually meet your needs. Then guys, along with this, the yang and the physical side could be making yourself physically fill out those applications or physically going to talk to businesses to see if they are hiring or it could even just be going on the internet and physically typing in job search terms so that you can find open positions that fit your needs but no matter the situation guys with these scenarios above or any other one you find in your life it's very important to know that the yin and the yang have to work together it's much harder to be successful with just one of these things. Use the example of the firefighter that we talked about who, through both physical strength and mental fortitude, is able to put all the proper things together in that situation to save the old woman's life. It's a lot like math class, guys. You've got to use both sides of the equation in order to solve and find the answer. And guys, I know that in my simple and short time on Earth... I have found myself in many different situations where I've been physically strong and mentally weak and I failed to achieve my goals. I have also found myself in many situations where I've been physically weak but mentally fortified and I've struggled to achieve goals as well. But I can tell you this, it has always been very few and far between that I have taken on an obstacle, I've taken on a challenge in which I was both mentally fortified and physically strong and I have come out the other side without success. I always seem to find it and I always seem to land a lot closer to my goals and my aspirations whenever I bring both of those to the table. And guys, today I know I did a lot of yelling on the show, so I think I'm going to close out with a little bit of a pun and I apologize in advance. So with that, guys, always be sure to keep your head yin the game and also don't forget to bring your yang game. Guys, thanks for sticking around with us for so long and putting up with my bad puns at the end there. But I hope y'all guys are having a fantastic week. I hope you're getting closer to your goals. And I hope that we are actively being a part of helping you develop. Remember, you can always reach out for help, whether it's help with your physical stuff, whether it's help with your mental stuff, or even your spiritual side. I can help you try to figure out whatever it is you're going through because I've likely been there myself. But guys, stay strong, stay motivated, and always be prepared for whatever is next in line. Yeah.